In this video, we're going to be replacing the front brakes on this 2015 Hyundai Sonata. With the 21 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and take our tire off. On the back of our caliper, we have two bolts. They're going to be 14 millimeters. We're going to back those out now. Now that we have our two bolts removed, what we're gonna do is remove our actual caliper from the caliper bracket and the rotor. The piston in here is probably compressed in holding the caliper in place. If we put a good amount of pressure in there, it's not really moving. So we're gonna use a small pry bar just to wiggle our caliper off of the pads and do top and bottom. You're gonna to get to a certain point where it's almost free. What you want at that point to have handy is something to hang your caliper with. We don't wanna put any unnecessary stress on this hose. So we're gonna slowly work our caliper off while holding it up. We're going to hang it now on our strut. All right, it's back, it's out of the way. No unnecessary stress on the hose. Now that we have our caliper out of the way, we have access to our pads. Sometimes you can just pry your pads off of the rotor. Sometimes they're stuck on there. So again, we're gonna use that small pry bar. Just put it between the actual pad and the backing plate and just give it a tap. Take our pads right out. You can see these definitely need to be replaced. Same thing on the front. On the front, there's really not a lot of room to tap in this way. Just take your time and work that pad off. Now from here, if we wanted to, we could remove our brake hardware, and we might as well, since we'll be replacing it, do it here while the caliper bracket is mounted, giving us a little leverage. Now on our caliper bracket, we have two bolts back here. These are gonna be two 17 millimeter bolts. We're gonna use a pry bar, break them free. Now with these bolts, we're not gonna take one of them out all the way until we get the other one started. All right, so we're gonna leave this one here for a second and we'll get this one going. 
until it's fairly loose. It's easier to do that while it's mounted to the knuckle. Now that our caliper bracket's removed, we're gonna take our rotor off. Typically, you can just give this a couple of taps, maybe have to spin it, do the same thing on the other side, and they come off. Uh, side note also, some of them have these screws attaching the rotor to the actual hub. Our vehicle does not have the screws in, but if you do have them, go ahead and remove them before you start tapping. Ours won't come free, so what we're gonna do is use a mallet, Let's see if we can knock that free. We're gonna hit ours from the back now. We just wanna make sure that we're clear of our backing plate. Now that we have our rotor off, we can see the surface of our hub here. Someone's obviously been here before. Those screws were cut off and ground flush. But at this point, we still have to clean this up, make this surface nice and flat for our new rotor to mount to. We're gonna use a cleaning disc on our hub. We're not gonna use sandpaper. We're not looking to remove metal material, just the loose rust and corrosion. Now don't try and force the tool anywhere it doesn't belong. This is just gonna cause damage, either to your tool, yourself, or the stud. Whatever we can't get to with this tool, we'll then transition over with our wire brush and just get on the small areas. Once we have our hub surface clean and free of any rust and corrosion that we can get off of there, definitely free of all the loose material, you wanna have a absorbent pad or a drip pan down or a rag. What we're gonna do is clean this off with some brake clean. Just kind of dab that dry. Once this is dry, we're gonna coat it with some anti-seize around the hub surface. Now that we have our anti-seize on our hub, what we're going to do is mount up our rotor backwards, press it all the way up to that hub, and we're going to hit this outer surface here where our brake pads will sit with some brake clean. Just removing any shipping oils or greases from this surface. And we're gonna take it and flip it around. Do the same thing on this surface. And because our vehicle didn't have those two screws to hold our rotor nice and flush, what we're gonna do is now move on to our caliper bracket. So we have our caliper bracket. What we're gonna do before we put this back on the vehicle is we're gonna clean up where our metal hardware would sit. All right, so we're gonna get rid of any corrosion, any rust, any loose particles in there. We're also gonna take out our pins and re-grease those before we reinstall. 
we're going to get in this area here with a wire brush. Once those are clean, we're going to just spray them quickly with some brake parts cleaner and dry them off. While we let the rest of that dry, we're going to pull out our caliper pins and re-grease those. So we're going to just take these and twist the pins right out. Now you notice there's a difference in the pins. Make sure you keep them where they belong. We're also going to take the rubber out. Just going to pinch that and pull it right out. And we're going to clean everything with brake parts cleaner. Be careful not to spray yourself in the face here. If you had a bore brush or a brush you could get in there, now would be a great time to use it. We're getting pretty clean with just the cleaner. And we're going to clean our boots as well. Just try and get rid of any extra residue that doesn't need to be there, inside and outside. Set those aside, let them dry. What I'm actually going to do is take this same rag, flip it over, and wipe down our pins. What you want to take note of is the lip on the top here. I'm going to make sure that's clean and free of any rust or corrosion. I'm just going to hit that really quick with a wire brush. That's where the rubber boot will seal to prevent more corrosion and moisture getting in there. From here, we'll dry everything up and put on some new grease. Now that everything's dry, we're going to reinstall our boot. There's going to be a top and a bottom. I'm going to find this bottom area here. I'm going to press it into its corresponding area on the caliper bracket. Just check that that seal is good all the way around. Do the same thing on the top or the other side. All right, from here, we're going to re-grease our pins. We're not going to use a lot of grease. This is probably going to be enough for both pins, but we're going to grease all the way up to that lip and a little dab on the bottom. Spread this out super thin.
And from here, we're going to take our caliper pins, we're going to slide them back into position. We're going to bottom them all the way out, which is squeeze them all the way in, get that rubber boot to seal. Do the same thing on the other side. And we'll check that they move freely. Now we'll flip this over, we'll take a little bit more grease and we're going to put it where our hardware, our brake hardware is going to sit. This is going to help with a little bit of vibration and corrosion. Take our new hardware, press that into place. Flip it over and do the other side. What I like to do here is just take a rag and go in between where the rotor will sit. If you had any squish out, this will just help keep your rotor clean. Now we're ready to take it to the vehicle. So we're gonna put our caliper bracket in place. And we're gonna start our bolts by hand. While you're doing this, it's also good to make sure, like in our case, our two screws are missing, so our rotor is a little free floating. It's good to make sure your rotor is seated flat while you're doing this to make sure your caliper bracket's going on straight. Once we have these snugged up, we'll come back and torque them down. These are going to get torqued down to 70 foot-pounds. Now with our caliper bracket torqued down, we're going to put our pads in place. So we're going to start pushing them into the slot at the bottom, rotate them into the top, put our squeal indicator on the back side. At this point, we're ready to put our caliper back on to our caliper bracket. Because our pads here have more material on them and our piston is out far enough where we can't slide it over, we're going to need to compress this piston. So we're going to use a tool that compresses the piston. We're just going to put just a little pressure on that piston 
before we start compressing, we're going to flip this over and we're going to open our bleeder screw to allow air or fluid to come out of the bleeder screw while we compress the piston instead of going back through the brake system. Just take note of where your rotor is, try not to get any brake fluid on the rotor. So we have just a little bit of fluid coming out of it now. I'm going to rotate this backwards and compress that piston. As soon as we're done compressing the piston, we're going to close the bleeder screw. to the point now we can close up that bleeder screw. I'm just going to take it right off the hanger and rotate it. Now from here we can release our tool and before we put this on we're just going to give it a wipe to get this residual brake fluid off of here. Now we're going to slide it onto our new pads and into position. Take our two bolts, we're going to start at the top, thread it in by hand. Just get those snugged up and we'll come back and torque them down. Now we can come back and torque these two caliper bolts down. Give me 20 foot pounds. And because these are newly greased and moving freely, I'm going to keep an eye in here, see if this bolt here is spinning. If it is, I'll go ahead and back that up with a wrench. All right, so we're going to back up these nuts here, these bolts with a 17 millimeter wrench. All right, so at this point, you want to get in your vehicle and you want to pump your brakes as hard as you can, three to four times, holding it there for about a couple of seconds each time. All right, now that you have your brake pedal pressed three or four times, we can come down to the caliper. We took our cover off earlier. You want to remove your cover, grab a 10 millimeter socket or wrench, and back out your bleeder screw anywhere from a quarter turn to a full turn. What you're looking for is a steady flow of brake fluid with no brakes, no hesitations, or no air bubbles in it. Once you've gotten that to come out of your bleeder screw, you're going to go ahead and tighten that down. Ours looks pretty good. I don't see any hesitations in the line or brakes in the fluid. Close that up. At this point, what I like to do is hit the area that was wet from brake fluid with some brake parts cleaner. 
dry that off. That'll do a couple of things. It'll help keep your bleeder screw clean. And when you clean off any fluid that dripped, you'll be able to tell once this dries if you have a leak and you need to retighten your screw. But now, go ahead and put our cover on there. Now, what you want to do is find your brake fluid reservoir. On the sides, you'll see a minimum and a maximum. Our brake fluid level is between the two. If your brake fluid level is pretty low or at the minimum, you want to add until you're between the two lines, closer to the top side than the bottom. Once you've done that, you're all set. And now we can put our tire back on. With a 21 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and snug these up. Now that we're down on the ground, we're going to go ahead and torque our lug nuts to 75 foot-pounds. We're going to do that in a crisscross pattern. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.